time value of money. So why is there a time value of money? It's because a dollar in hand today is worth more than a dollar in hand tomorrow. Why is that? Well, I could invest today and gain the return from that investment. I could avoid the loss of value due to inflation and costs. Or I could lend the money today and gain the interest on that loan. Interest? Why is there an interest on a loan? It's because we need to compensate for the risk of lending and the loss of value from other potential uses. Here are the four relevant variables in dealing with the time value of money. First is the principal amount, which is also called as the initial amount lent. Next is the time period of the loan. The other one is the interest rate. And lastly is the time period to which the interest rate applies. So there are two types of interest. Simple interest, which earned only on original investment, and compound interest, interest earned on interest. To further understand the concept of time value of money, we must know how timelines work. In drawing a timeline of a 100 peso lump sum due in two years, we can see that the payment was given at the end of the maturity. Now, in drawing a timeline for a three-year 100 peso ordinary annuity, we can see that the payment was given at every period until the end of the maturity. However, there are times where there are uneven cash flow stream, as seen in the illustration. In the first period, we have 100 as the payment, second period, 75, and for the third period, we have 50. So now, let's move on to future value. A future value is the amount to which a cash flow will grow over a given period of time. In solving for the future value, we must use the general formula, which is the future value on period n equals the present value, open parenthesis, 1, plus the interest rate, close parenthesis, raised to the period of n. So now, let's try solving for the future value. Let's say we have a principal amount of $100 compounded for 3 years with an annual rate of 5%. To solve for the future value, we need to use the general formula, which is the present value, open parenthesis, 1 plus the interest rate, close parenthesis, raised to the period of n. So now let's plug in the values, which is $100, open parenthesis, 1 plus 5%, close parenthesis, raised to 3, resulting to the future value of $115.7625. Before we start computing for the present value, we must first know the concept of compounding. Now, compounding is the arithmetic process of determining the final value of a cash flow or a series of cash flows when compound interest is applied. So now, let's try solving for the present value. Example, let's say we have a principal amount of $115.7625, compounded for 3 years at 5% annually. To solve for the present value, we need to use the general formula, which is the future value all over open parenthesis 1 plus the interest rate close parenthesis raised to the period of n. So now let's plug in the values, which is 115.7625 all over open parenthesis 1 plus 5% close parenthesis raised to 3, resulting to the present value of $100. Before we start computing for the present value, we must first know the concept of compounding. Compounding is the arithmetic process of determining the final value of cash flow or a series of cash flows when compound interest is applied. Now, in present values, we use the discounting concept, which is finding the present value of cash flow when compound interest is applied. Now, in solving it, we must use the general formula, which is the present value equals the future value on period n all over open parenthesis 1 plus the interest rate close parenthesis raised to the period of n. So now, let's move on to annuity. 
annuity is a sequence of equal cash flows occurring at the end of each period. This is known as an ordinary annuity. An example of an ordinary annuity is if you borrow money to buy a house or a car, you will pay or repay the loan with a stream of equal payments. Now, annuity has two types. Ordinary annuity, which was discussed before, and annuity due, which is a sequence of periodic cash flows occurring at the beginning of each period. But, what is the difference between an ordinary annuity and an annuity due? Now, the ordinary annuity, you can see that the payment is given at the end of each period, while in annuity due, you can see that the payment was given at the beginning of each period. Future value of an ordinary annuity. The future value of an ordinary annuity is the future value of an annuity over n periods. The future value of an annuity due is for each payment occurs one period earlier than an annuity due, all of the payments earn interest for one additional period. Therefore, the future value of an annuity due will be greater than that of a similar ordinary annuity. So now, let's move on to perpetuities. Suppose you will receive a fixed payment every period, like for every month, for every year, etc., forever. This is an example of a perpetuity. The present value of perpetuity is equal to the periodic cash payment all over the interest rate. An example of a perpetuity is when you want to create an endowment to fund a football scholarship which pays 15,000 pesos per year. For how much money must be set aside today if the rate of interest is 5%? So if we plug in the values to the formula, we will get 15,000 pesos divided by 0 0.05, which will be equal to 300,000 pesos. Now, for the classifications of interest rates, first we have the nominal rate, which is also called the quoted or state rate, an annual rate that ignores compounding effects. Now, nominal rates is stated in contracts. With that said, periods must also be given. Example, 8% quarterly or 8% daily interest. Next is the periodic rate. It is the amount of interest charged each period. Last is the effective annual rate, the annual rate of interest actually being earned, taking into account compounding. 